Welcome. This is the Life Habits Podcast Series, and my name is Carl Vradenberg. This is the series that helps you learn new habits to optimize your life in order to stay sane in this crazy world. This is episode number 98, and the topic for today is career workouts. You know, I'm often asked for career advice by family and friends, by my staff, by the people I mentor at work, and by many of you who listen to this podcast series. So I thought I'd devote this episode to what I think is the most important career advice that I can give you. And the title there for is Career Workouts. Now, before we get to the advice I'd like to provide you with in particular, I'd like to, as we usually do, go through a series of inspirational quotes that relate to this topic. The first is by Michael Gerber, who said, The difference between great people and everyone else is that great people create their lives actively, while everyone else is created by their lives, passively waiting to see where life takes them next. Mahatma Gandhi said, The future depends on what you do today. And John Dewey said, We do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. Really good thoughts to get us thinking in this particular direction. We have done a number of episodes together over the time that this podcast series has been focusing on topics. And we started right in the very early episodes. It was an episode on career planning and career strategies. In fact, two episodes, that's Life Habits 6 and 7. Did an episode on achieving success, that was number 15. One on leadership, which is 29. On work-life balance, which is 34. One on getting the job, which is episode 55. Dealing with Workplace Challenges, which is episode 77. Social Intelligence for Success and was episode 93. I've done a whole lot of episodes also on acquiring particular skills and practicing them into habits that relate to career and work advancement. So I'd suggest that in addition to this particular episode, you may want to check those out as well. I'd like to introduce you to a new way of thinking, a new frame around this thinking about career. As I just mentioned, we've talked a lot about a variety of aspects of improving, you know, your your career and particular skills and the like. But what I'd like to introduce to you right now is this notion that we should be thinking of the analogy of physical exercise. And if you think of physical exercise, I'm sure that you arrange to go to the gym a few times a week to build your cardiovascular capacity, your muscular strength, etc., and to look good. You may even track your progress in a journal or some other form. You may even check in with a trainer or a friend to get advice and to track your progress. Or you may not be doing that. But even if you don't, I would suggest you likely at least know that you should be doing those things with regard to your physical exercise. Now think of the approach that you take to your career. Do you think about any of this, about thinking about a particular set of activities during a week to focus on your career and your career advancement? Do you plan time for it? Do you work on particular skills that you're developing? Do you track your progress? And do you check in with a coach and or someone else that will help you guide your career? Well, likely not. And in many, many of the conversations I have with people where we're talking about career and in mentoring various mentoring relationships, it's the furthest from what a lot of people are thinking about. And yet they have this whole perspective and may well regularly engage in physical exercise in a very organized and structured way. Yet when it comes to a career, they don't think that approach is appropriate or they don't even think about it. And so what I'd like to introduce to you today is really an approach that goes through the whole question of what do you do with regard to your career by using similar concepts that you're well aware of with regard to physical exercise. And there are three major elements that I'd like to suggest that you do. And the first is all about scheduling career workouts, the title of this overall episode. And think about it from that point of view. Think about that if you schedule 
you know, two to three times that you go to the gym a week and you do a particular number of things there, that's your time to go improve your physical health. And you should use the same mindset when you think of career workouts. So think about it from the point of view of actually putting on your calendar, if you are the type of person that actually uses a a calendar to schedule meetings or various events. And if you don't, get into the practice of making a particular time of the week dedicated to looking at aspects related to your career. It might be an hour a week. It might be an hour every two weeks, but I'd suggest whatever you do, do try to make it per week. And this is the time that I like to say that is all yours. It's the time that you should specifically focus on only you. Most of the rest of the time, if you're at work, you're focusing on doing everything you can to contribute to your team, to contribute to your company, to contribute to your company's, you know, success. All of it is focused on sort of the company. What I'd like to suggest with regard to these career workouts that you're going to be scheduling is they're all about you. They're all about really improving yourself and your skills. You may well start off the first of these sessions by first thinking about, you know, what skills you want to develop, you know, what your career goals are, what you'd like to achieve. And a lot of the other episodes that I referenced earlier can be helpful in coming up with that list of areas of focus. But then after that, you'd be scheduling, let's say that hour a week that is yours and yours alone to focus on yourself and focus on, let's say, the skills that you wanted to develop. It may also be to focus on writing a very effective, you know, resume or portfolio if that is relevant to your career. And you don't have to be doing that thinking about you want to go to make a job change. No, you want to use those to guide essentially what kinds of things you think that you still have gaps in that you want to further develop. So schedule those sessions, spend the time you need during it and not be distracted from anyone else. Make sure that you turn off any, you know, instant messaging, you know, clients that you turn off your phone or uh, essentially put it on, on silent. Don't get distracted by anything. This is your time to devote to yourself and your, your career. So as you develop, There may be times when you want to, again, spend a session thinking about, so how are you doing? And you want to um, change your focus and, and focus on something else that you think you need to develop with regard to your career and being more more effective. It may be actually doing some of the things that you have thought about that are appropriate to your career, which aren't necessarily learning new skills, but actually practicing them. So if you've decided that you wanted to get more into social media or you wanted to blog more, let's say, or vlog more, take that time that you dedicated during the week to do those things, to write those blogs, to do, you know, a video, whatever, whatever you've chosen to, to focus on, but it's your time and your time alone. And of course, if you do a really good job at this, you're not only doing the right thing for you and yourself and your own career, you know, you're also going to be helping the very organization that you work for. And because you're going to be making yourself more effective at being an employee or being a member of their organization, wherever you work. And, you know, this is also appropriate to those of you who aren't yet in an overall career, that you're still aiming toward a career. You're working in university and or in colleges somewhere. You can use the same approach to saying, Are, am I really developing the right sorts of combination of requirements for my eventual career? And that might well entail things like, hey, I'm doing all the right coursework, but am I getting the right experience? Am I getting enough experience in various things that when I do go and seek out my first you know, opportunity to work in my career, am I well-rounded enough? Again, that's where writing that resume and that portfolio may well provide you the insight to say, ah, looks like I'm doing really well, you know, in my coursework, but I think I need to have some experience in this particular area. And whether you get that as paid employment, or if you do that, you know, as an unpaid intern, let's say, you will be chasing what will make you successful down the road. So the major thrust of this set of suggestions is to do this career workout. The second uh, suggestion, much like, uh, again, if you are doing 
a series of workouts at the gym, a lot of people actually have some plan to do a variety of things for cardiovascular fitness, be, you know, running for a half hour or 45 minutes, uh, might be doing uh, some uh, particular weights in a particular order. And then you keep track of what you actually did. So much like you would want to do that if you're doing your physical exercises, you may well want to adopt here a career journal. So in addition to your career workouts, you'd actually have a career journal where you keep track of what kinds of assessment did you do of the gaps that you wanted to fill, the kind of things you wanted to work on, and then keep track of did you do what you meant to do? This will keep you organized in your weekly workouts that you're scheduling as well. Make note in your journal as well for things that you are not only just developing, but also instances where if you get compliments or you get feedback from something you're doing, a lot of people will you know, get that in the form of somebody just said that at the end of a session that you did or a presentation that you did at work, let's say, or it came in through doing, you know, th through an email that somebody may have sent, uh, or it may have been a, a comment on a tweet, you know, that somebody uh, provided. People often forget to make note of those. And if you have a career journal, you should be writing those in there so that when it's time for summarizing this and making it more formal in the forms that I've mentioned earlier, the resume and the portfolio types of things, you can now reference those and say, hey, here's some, you know, comments. It may also be, you know, some things that you want to pursue further and further formalize. If you had, you know, some comments, you might end up wanting to ask those people to be references for you so that when you're looking for your first, you know, opportunity or if you're looking for changing your role, you can also use those people and their comments and maybe a further articulation of those uh, if those people were to serve as references. And also you could even ask them to be an endorsement or endorser, you know, on LinkedIn, you know, for you as well. So this is all about I would suggest using a digital version because it's more portable, but if you want to use a physical version of a journal, you can do that as well, whatever you're comfortable with. But you should be keeping track of and being organized in the way that you are progressing in the work that you're doing to further advance your, your skills, your habits, and everything else that relates to the topic of you and your career. Now, the third aspect of this overall approach is to, again, making an analogy of the physical exercise. If you're doing your physical exercise, you may be checking in with a trainer, maybe checking in with a friend that just is really good at the kinds of things that you're working on. And you're checking in on, well, are you progressing appropriately? Are you doing the right number of reps? Are you doing, you know, are, are you are you using the right weights? Are you, are you actually, do you have the right uh, form for a particular cardiovascular exercise or, or physical one as in weight training? You generally will have somebody that you can rely on to get input and feedback. And uh, you may also be, you know, once a year, whatever, going and doing a checkup with your physician to see how you're doing as well with regard to some of the key metrics that you're also working on and why you're actually doing the, uh, the exercise in the first place. You can also use this same approach by using what I call career checkups. In this case, you want to be doing your workouts on a weekly basis. You want to keep your uh, career journal. You also want to do these career checkups. And the career checkups can really be an instance where you take, you know, the progress that you've been making, uh, maybe summarize some of the things that you've been putting in your career journal and getting together with, it might be a mentor that you uh, have worked with, you know, in the past or somebody that you're going to seek out. That is somebody that you really trust that has insight and experience that you could rely on to give you feedback on how you're progressing and the various things that you're doing in your career. It may also be your your manager if you have one or a leader that somehow has a responsibility within an organization that you also trust and, and admire in terms of giving you feedback. Seek them out and it may be in a an informal uh, fashion like I've talked about before with regard to mentoring where you may want to just seek somebody out and buy them a coffee and ask them to to provide you some feedback after you, you give some summary. If it's somebody that is aware of and sees you doing the various things that are part of your overall career, might be somebody at work, might be a fellow colleague, you can seek out feedback from them with regard to how you're progressing and also 
then use that as input to determining what you want to work on next with regard to your weekly workouts, uh, your career workouts. So it may also be the case that, and, and many organizations do this, do a either regular formal evaluation as in, you know, employee together with the manager, or it might be a twice a year, it might be once a year feedback mechanism as well. See those as well as career checkups, uh, where you can summarize what it is that you've done. You'll be in great shape in doing that because you will have had your career journal all along. You can now do a more formal description of what you've accomplished and what kind of feedback you've got on it and what kind of development that you've been doing with regard to your skills and how that's going and, all, and the like. And then you get feedback on that from uh, this more formal uh, feedback mechanism with you know a manager or a leader uh, in the organization as well. So those are the three areas that I suggest that you can very specifically operationalize, if you will, where you can use the approaches that work so well for so many people with regard to their physical fitness, making sure that they're cardiovascularly fit, making sure that they're actually working on their muscles and their, and their weight training, and also, you know, making themselves look good and feel good as a result. Well, the equivalent in doing this for your career of making sure that you're developing your skills, the right skills at the right level of mastery with regard to developing them into real habits and then getting the outcome, the outcomes that you need. And as a result, also to use the same analogy, looking good to, you know, your current employer, future employers, and also make you feel good and more effective in your career and your career progression as well. So that's my overall summary of using the aspects of physical fitness that a lot of people use and apply them to your career. I'd also like to, as we regularly do before we finish up, read a little bit of the feedback. And in this case, a couple of bits of feedback that came in in iTunes. We got a uh, some feedback from C. Daug uh, from Australia, five stars. And the feedback is very informative information delivered smoothly. I've listened to several podcasts and can say it is one of the few podcasts that offer practical and solid advice for work, relationships, communicating with people, and the basics of life. No mumbo jumbo stuff. Best podcast on self-help. So thanks ever so much, Doug, for that feedback. Another five stars, this time from Spain, Koshka says, I really enjoy these podcasts. I like the positivity of its messages and the soothing voice of Carl. Although I still have so much struggle to apply the advices to myself, I understand that I need to learn a lot and deal with bad habits and thoughts I have. Listening to this podcast helps me a lot. I also was surprised to find the blog of Carl and his main occupation as a designer at IBM. I enjoy your design articles as well. Thank you. And so, yeah, I wanted to, before finishing up, just wanted to mention as well that even this topic that we've talked about today, I have also written a blog post about that that's available on carlvradenberg.com. And as the last comment also mentioned in iTunes, that I also deal with their topics with regard to design and design thinking. So if that's an area that you have an interest in as well, for sure, check out carlvradenberg.com. That's it for this particular episode. I really hope you take the advice I've provided here with regard to the approach to your career and career progression, and also encourage you to continue to write to me at uh, lifehabits at gmail.com. Also encourage you, as these two people have done in iTunes, make a comment, uh, provide a rating in iTunes or wherever you get this podcast from. And with that, I'd like to wish you all the best in furthering yourself. And thank you for doing that. And we'll talk to you next time. And bye for now.